On September 12th, Blue Origin launched their New Shepard NS3 suborbital booster with the RSS HG Wells capsule on top, containing a payload of research experiments. No humans this time, fortunately. First, let's check out the launch. T minus 16, guidance internal. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Command engine start. 2, 1. So everything looked good and, and normal until around max Q, one minute into the flight. If we fast forward a little bit. The BE and three engine throttled up as we're going to push up to max Q. Again, that's the point where the aerodynamic stress on the vehicle is at its maximum. Throttle back and then continue on up to space. So there was a critical failure in or near the booster's BE3 engine, causing an uncontrolled spout of flame which knocked the rocket off its trajectory. The capsule's solid fueled launch escape system engaged automatically, carrying the capsule up and away from the booster. Now, uh, this was interesting that, that, it, that the, a, an uncrewed mission had a launch escape system, but the capsule is designed to accommodate either uncrewed payloads or humans. And so the same launch escape system uh, is available and activated in either circumstance. Unlike SpaceX's uh, Dragon 2 spacecraft, which has two different variants, the cargo variant, which does not have a launch escape system, and then the crew variant, the Crew Dragon, which has the uh, Super Draco thrusters, which act as a launch escape system. So we did not get to see what happened to the booster, but it still had a lot of fuel in it because it, it was uh, uh, quite a ways from Miko, and it was ascending at an angle it was not designed for. It very likely exploded in midair, or at least if it survived the descent, uh, definitely blew up when it impacted the ground because it still contained a lot of fuel. The capsule, on the other hand, was safe and sound. The parachutes deployed and it touched down normally with a burst of cushioning retro thrust, which we will see in a moment. Oof. And again, uh, if you haven't heard it, the many times it's been said before, uh, that puff of dust is not evidence of a cratered landing. Uh, it's evidence of the retro thrusters which cushioned the landing at the last second. Again, the New Shepard crew capsule has um, carried quite a number of humans, including 80 and 90 year old uh uh, elderly folks such as William Shatner and uh, Wally Funk. So yes, the, the capsule landing is uh, supposed to look like that and it behaved normally, which was actually uh, very impressive. It, it uh, did exactly what it was supposed to do. Um, so let's take another look at the mishap at 25% speed. So we see now normally the hydrogen fuel burns very cleanly. And so we don't normally see this bright yellow flame. And that uh, blast you see there, if we back up a, a bit, boom, that blast you see there is not the rocket exploding or not the booster exploding, I should say, but it is... Uh, the booster being enveloped in the thrust from the capsule's launch escape system, which engaged. So there we have the rocket. 
tilting at a at an angle and then there the launch escape system engages and it uses uh, solid solid propellant for the launch escape system now uh, crew dragon uses uh, hypergolic fuels they use hydrogen hydrazine um, nitrogen tetroxide and, and and hydrazine or udmh which is um, those are quite toxic and they are liquid whereas the new shepherd's launch escape system uses solid fuel rather like the uh, the sls rockets but um in any case now blue origin only has one new shepherd booster ns4 the same booster that has launched all of their crewed flights whereas ns3 the booster that was just lost has only launched um uh, you know, research payloads to uh, suborbit. They still have both of their crew capsules, though. Uh, at the RSS First Step, which is the one configured for crew, and the RSS HG Wells, which is this one that landed intact here. 